All right, so uh, welcome everybody to my first tutorial. Um, I'm gonna do this as fast as possible because I've been going through this process 25 million times. You probably noticed by the several different projects I have open that you're about to see called the same thing because I've had to do numerous of takes on this sucker. So here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and create a Windows Compile application. I'm gonna call it First Lesson. Next, it's going to be a console application, empty project, boom, boom, oh, by the way, I'm Great Gabe. Yeah, I proved it to you by showing a picture of me and this lovely young lady over here. Okay, so here we are. This is our integrated development environment, Visual Studio 2010, or IDE, is how most people put it. And, uh, yep. That is a term you want to know because you hear it a lot here at Full Sail. This is what we use at Full Sail University. Before coming here, I would use the IDE code blocks. And that it gets the job done. It's a, it's pretty good. If you want to follow along using code blocks, that's fine. But you can also get a free version of Visual Studio if you don't feel like paying for the fancy 2010 professional. Uh, yeah, you can download Express off the website. So. That's it, and this is what we're going to be using right now. This is the Solution Explorer, where all our source files go. We're going to add a source file, new item, and then we're going to create a CPP called main, and then we add. And there we are. And I will create a comment that says, Great Gabe's first tutorial. And then I'm going to go ahead and talk about some of the hotkeys that I use habitually in Visual Studio, just so you know, because, uh, not 12, anyway, the first one would be F7, which builds slash compiles, and then the second hotkey I use quite habitually is F5, which runs the code, and basically the reason I want to know that is because I will be using a, the keyboard commands a lot. I use a lot of hotkeys because it makes me feel awesome. It makes me feel like a hacker. Also, because it's a little bit faster to code by just keeping everything on the keyboard instead of just annoyingly moving the cursor around on this little mouse pad or mouse, whatever have you. So, there we go. Okay, now I'm going to start by uh, using another hotkey that won't work for you, but uh, <clears throat> you're going to have to write the rest of this out yourself. But in programming one, I believe we did it in. Uh, we used a tool called a macros to record a set of code and we associated it with the hotkey control shift m for main and uh... i'm gonna go ahead and hit that now control shift m and basically what that does is as we were typing it recorded the code and then we were able to take it with us there's a bit of code in here we're not going to use which is the color header file because that was something an instructor built up and uh, there we go. So the first thing I want to point out here is the header files, obviously. And this is the I.O. stream using the namespace standard, or STD. And uh, that is what we're going to use. Oh, by the way, this code's not valid anymore. Um, but yeah. And then there's the function main, which has a return type of integer. It is called main, and its parameters are void. And then its function body is represented by these curly braces. <coughs> And then there's the return integer type of zero over here, which shoots it back to over here, so let it know. And then uh, the system function, <clears throat> basically, you, in quotes, would write a string of a DOS command for Windows, which is like a command prompt command. And then the C out insertion operator and endel all come from IO stream in the namespace std which you are about to see in a little bit uh, firstly that is what main is I'm going to quote unquote my programming one teacher the one function to rule them all oh. and <clears throat> this is basically where all the code goes uh, in game programming however we're not going to put all of our code inside of main we're going to use a lot of class files and everything as such and we'll get into that a little bit later but today we are going to cover uh... variables and data types and displaying text to the screen which is pretty boring stuff but like i said i will try to go as fast as possible to skip these fundamental concepts so that we can get into the fun stuff like graphics apis um, so that way i would like if you guys were able to uh... critique me on this kind of thing too because 
I need to know how well I'm teaching because I honestly don't consider myself a pretty good teacher. So I would appreciate it if I got both good and bad comments on this video. So let's start by with data types, variables, and geo. We're going to start with data types. And data types are basically things like int, like you saw in the main. And then there's also char, there's also float. What else is there? And there's long, and then there's double, etc. You know. So yeah, that's basically what it is. Those basically precede the variable name, and that is what defines what type of variable it is and what it holds. Now, variables are a little bit easier to explain because if you think mathematics you would think y equals x like the basic linear equation and uh, basically if you were to create an integer or I'm sorry not an integer but a variable called y you would use the integer data type and set it equal to x as such oh wow, I already did that up here and then there's also uh, you could declare the integer x as such without having to initialize it and basically that's what all that does and a char is not really associated with a number it is a, a letter and that we usually would initialize it as such so that's basically the gist of data types and what they're for to further explain I will create this and this is a declaration of a variable that is our data type integer and then this next part is our variable name. And then that is our declaration. The other way to set up a variable would be an initialization, which would be int my age. And then this would initialize the variable. I'm sorry, that is still a declaration. Initialize would be my age, which is 19, as such. And the difference is basically that equal sign and actually storing the value. So that is basically variables in a nutshell. So now I'm going to go ahead and use C out the insertion operator from the IO stream, and I'm going to write my name is Gabriel Is Plus. And then I'm going to use the end L. And I'm going to go, what is your age? Which is probably not the best way to ask that question. But, you know, there we go. And another thing I want to point out is this delimiter and this command basically do the same thing. They basically just start a new line when you display it. Um, if you worked with C, you've seen delimiters before, such as the null terminator. And so that's basically just the new line one. And... Uh, then we're going to use cn, the extraction operator, and then we're going to put age. So that they will have to type in their age, and then we will be able to get their age from them. And there we go. That is how that works. So now we're going to go ahead and use something called string concatenation. I believe that's what it is we concatenate the strings which is a fancy way of saying we combine them so we're going to use uh, your oops your age and then we're going to type out well, then we're going to do some math real quick. And then we're going to write that. Put your age first minus my age years apart from me. And then I'll put a smiley. And then uh, there you have it. That is the gist of our code. Uh, you know, for math, there is more uh, our basic operators. 